and welcome to Cyber Focus, your source for international business information. My name is Sarah Coe, and our guest today is Mr. Nathaniel Delafield. Now, Mr. Delafield holds master's degrees in social work and urban and regional planning from the University of Michigan and a bachelor's in sociology from Wesleyan University. He has been the CEO of La Faza Foods since co-founding the company back in 2006 after he and his wife served as Peace Corps volunteers in Madagascar. Now, Mr. Delafield helped to establish one of the country's first direct trade vanilla projects in partnership with local farmer groups and U.S. buyers. Having a passion for gourmet food and food systems and for the culture of Northeast and Madagascar, he has spent significant time living and working with agricultural producers and helped organize a large cooperative of vanilla, clove, and coffee growers in the Mananara North region. So Nathaniel, thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me on. Wonderful. So tell us a little bit about you and your company, La Faza Foods. I mean, how did you choose to go the fair trade organic certified business route? Sure. Well, first of all, um, as, you, as you said in your introduction, we were in Madagascar already in some very rural communities um, as Peace Corps volunteers. We had decided to go and have that experience um, after working in the U.S. for a number of years. And it was uh, something that was very eye-opening for us, but we really saw a, a need for um, a different approach to both supply chains um, within the spices industry, particularly with uh, vanilla in Madagascar, but also a need to refocus it on sort of a value chain perspective, something where we were taking the farmer perspective first. When we entered the community as volunteers, we were challenged by a number of groups in the community immediately to start coming up with a different business model and trade model um, that would really help put these communities in a different spot along the value chain. So we saw both a, a need and an opportunity, and also we had a very direct interest as volunteers in the community to both meeting the needs there and, and expressing some of our own interests, which for me has always been um, very focused on community systems, community empowerment, uh, poverty alleviation, and um, a number of other um, sort of organizational development focuses that I've had. So personally, for me, it was a, it was a great fit, and I got excited about that um, right away, and we began working on it um, from the very beginning. So we have um, progressed it from that point, and it's always been a partnership with communities in Madagascar from the very beginning. Well, it definitely sounds like La Faza Foods um, has very effective working relationships with the local producers and growers there. So how are you able to, and the company as well, really try to establish them? Yes, yeah, so at first, this was um, something that uh, we decided to approach really carefully and slowly. We did a lot of listening. We had a lot of individual and group conversations with farmers to get a better sense of what farmers were thinking about mm -hmm. in this process to get a sense of the history in the area, the trade history, the cultural history and development history around in um, some local villages and, and more broadly in the region where we were based. And so I think that was a, a especially helpful to us in forming strong, uh, positive relationships with farmers um, because we really wanted to let them first help us learn where they were coming from. So we, we tried not to impose too much of our own thoughts on that, but really take it um, from the ground up uh, with farmers groups. So that certainly went a long way to forming partnerships that are long lasting. And, and in fact, we still work with um, most of the original farmers groups that we started out working with. We've just broadened that um, over time. So within um, those initial conversations, we also saw the seeds for um, both a model that would work well um, for trade and also a, a good division of roles within um, within that partnership with farmers. That was also exciting. Where do we bring value um, as opposed to where's the value already there um, in what they were producing? So these are very, very good farmers, um, very skilled um, and very dedicated farmers um, and farmers groups. There was really no need for us to bring value to that. They were already producing a, a really wonderful um, set of products in this area um, that even internationally um, is still ranked on a, on a very high level. Um, within a global commodity chain. So we didn't need to bring that value. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, I'm sure it wasn't always easy. Um, what were some challenges you and the company uh, faced, and how did you guys overcome it? Sure. Well, we've, we have faced a lot of challenges, and we've been operating now for close to 10 years 
um, we're still facing challenges uh, almost daily. The challenges are on the community level, um, organizational level, but also on the supply chain um, front where we have to be operating at really every point along the supply chain. That was a challenge we took on. We have um, certainly run into a, a number of, of particular areas of, ch of challenge, one being initial capitalization when you're in a global commodity market. Um, most of the players in markets like that are quite large, very, very well capitalized. Many in the um, spices industry, especially with vanilla, are um, players that have been in that market for a very, very long time, decades, if not uh, over 100 years. So there was a challenge to forming partnerships and really shoring up support for what we were doing um, when we didn't have enough of that type of either, either political capital um, uh, or financial capital. So we've formed a lot of partnerships to get past that um, to help us grow and, and really um, amplify some of what we were working on. Um, we also saw a lot of political challenges. So in Madagascar in 2000, late 2008, early 2009, there was a coup in Madagascar uh, through the entire country into political turmoil. And uh, for quite a while, and, and only up until very recently, um, the political uh, structure in Madagascar was not internationally recognized. So we saw a lot of the investment uh, disappear almost overnight. Um, most of the grant funding and NGO funding uh, disappeared, and many of the groups just left. And so that, that posed a, a very large challenge for us. We had to wait it through. We had to take on some, some different approaches to our work. Um, but now we're seeing it come back. So some of the way we overcome challenges is with patience and um, being careful not to make too many mistakes as we go. Well, having done business there for nearly a decade now, in your opinion, how is the overall environment looking like in Madagascar for existing and maybe even potential uh, local and international entrepreneurs? I think that Madagascar is a very exciting place to be working now. Um, it has overcome this political uh, crisis that it went through. Um, and it's a country that's very dedicated, I think, to improvement, um, both socially and economically in the country. So there's lots of opportunities in Madagascar. It's also a very unique place. So um, many of the, let's say, uh, plants and animals, for example, about 80% of them are endemic to Madagascar. So you have a, a very large environmental component to everything. There are very high quality um, products that come out of Madagascar, particularly in the spices category, but in other categories as well. There's a lot of mining. Um, there's, there's quite a lot of exciting places to get involved from a business perspective or from a development perspective. I'm especially excited in Madagascar, the intersection between the two of them. And I think that's where um, there's particularly particular uh, opportunity in Madagascar to be, to be working, either if you're already there working or if somebody looking at Madagascar as a country to get involved in. Um, I'd say the opportunities are, are really endless right now. Wonderful. Now, finally, could you share with us maybe some very important takeaway points or even advice for doing business in Madagascar and as a fair trade businessman yourself? Yes. Um, it's always hard to give advice because uh, sometimes I don't even take my own advice. Um, but I, I'd say when working on, on fair trade, it's, as we talked about at the beginning, it's very important to do a lot of listening. I think it's easy to come in thinking you have the answers and it's much more effective to come in uh, or, or at each stage of, of uh, effective work in fair trade, especially in Madagascar, developing countries, to assume you don't have the answers. And I think that's very important. It's an uncomfortable perspective and you have to get um, comfortable with being uncomfortable, out of your comfort zone, um, but doing a lot of listening. I think this is um, especially important. Um, also have to really understand where you work. We spend a lot of time in Madagascar learning cultural skills. And as trade systems become both more globalized but also much more complicated at the intersection between global and local, um, it's very important in our minds, it's very important to really have the cultural skills along with the trade and business skills to work effectively. And I think sometimes that doesn't get enough focus. And it's starting to get more attention, I think, um, from a, a training practitioner standpoint, maybe an education standpoint. I think it's very, very important for anybody getting involved in this field to take that very seriously. We're not yet good enough at it, but we do work at it every day and, and every year to, to really improve. Wonderful. Well, are there any last remarks you would like to add? 
in thinking about takeaway points, one of the things that's very exciting right now for those interested in social ventures, something that's both um, maybe business uh, or entrepreneurial in nature, but also really with an impact focus, um, whether it's social or environmental impacts, is the real groundswell right now globally and, and certainly here in the US around impact investment capital um, or sometimes called philanthropy um, investing. There is a real move beyond old models of philanthropy. So there is a lot of financial support right now being organized among mainstream investors and real capital um, organizations. So this is a very exciting time to be working on this front. I would encourage anyone to uh, get involved with that because there's a real base of support now forming on the financial side as well as just the, the social side. Uh, Nathaniel, thank you so much for coming in to speak with us today. Thank you so much for having me here. I appreciate that. Well, that's all for this edition of Cyber Focus. Thank you for joining us. Now, if you have any comments or suggestions for future topics, please contact us at cyber, that's C-I-B-E-R, at indiana.edu.